Hi, Internet. Welcome to the Gradron YouTube channel. It is Thin Lizzy Thursday. The cat has moved. I have the chair again. And so now it is time to see what random song we are getting this week. And um, for all you people who complain about the random number generator music, um, well, I got some a little bit jazzy for you this week. So enjoy these, uh, these nice jazz sounds while we figure out what we're listening to by Thin Lizzy. Thank you very much, Video Game Music, for helping me get through these uh, filler sections of the videos. Uh, brought to you courtesy of the Final Fantasy XIII soundtrack this time. Uh, who did that one? Who was the composer? I know Hamazu did most of the soundtrack, but I don't know if he did that track in particular. Um, either way, cool stuff. Um, speaking of cool stuff... Man, we've got a uh, we've got a track off of one of my favorite Lizzie records. Um, one of the few songs off Thunder and Lightning we haven't done. There's after this, after this we're gonna have only one track off the Thunder and Lightning album. Can you believe it? Um, so like the statistical chances of us getting it are gonna be uh, kind of minimal. But yeah, wowza! You know, almost another album clear. But this is. Uh, what track two off Thunder and Lightning? This is the one. It's kind of um an up tempo rocker, sort of keeping the energy going after the thunderous intro. Um, I feel like this one often gets forgotten in the shuffle of the album, and the tat says like it's not necessarily like the big like it's not one of the staples that people remember off this record. It's more of an album cut. Um, and so you'd think with uh, Trap 2, it would be more like prime placement and would be one of the like bigger tracks of the album, but this one often gets forgotten. So is it um, a lost classic that needs more love, or is it about appropriately placed in the Lizzie catalog in terms of how much the fans appreciate, where people like it, but maybe, you know, it's not, you know, a top 20, 30 Lizzie song. So, you know, let's let's dive into it. I definitely like it, but we'll see where it stacks up. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, um, you know, I love a lot of different kinds of music, uh, as evidenced by, uh, you know, the 
Final Fantasy 13 OST, the uh, the Taylor Swift song that annoy the people on the channel, and um, and this I um, you know in my heart I freaking. I freaking love hair metal, and if you say, oh, this isn't hair metal, I think if a, if a hair metal band did this song, they would do it basically exactly the same, but you'd call it hair metal then. But because it's Thin Lizzy, it's not hair metal. This is basically a hair metal song. It's got, you know, great cowbell, those crunchy 80s guitars, um, great energy, swagger, um, yeah, I definitely I I love this kind of music. This kind of music is like home to me, um, and so like I don't listen to it like this style as much lately. But as soon as I do, I'm like I'm like in and I'm I'm loving it. There's zero hesitation from me. This is just like it's a driving, rocking track. Makes you move. Makes you want to. It's like it's 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 great. I'm I'm loving it. Um, and I love how the chorus has the sense of menace to it, and it has this, like, consistent energy coming from Phil, which is just really, really cool. It, it almost has, like a, a, like, a frantic, desperate energy to it. Lyrically, I'm actually not really sure what this song is about, necessarily. So, this is the one, what does that mean? I'm actually going to read these lyrics out loud. I know it's been a while since I've done that. But it helps me wrap myself, my mind around what the lyrical piece is. I've got to find an occupation. I've got to keep myself employed. I've got, it's a bad situation. My brain's destroyed. Okay, so this is someone who is, doesn't have a job and his brain's destroyed. So probably he's like strung out on drugs, which is something Phil could relate to. I've got to find a new vocation. I feel it burning down inside. Such a low abrasion inside, it hurts my pride. So, like, he's, you know, sort of desperate to find that income. I hear it, I know it, I touch it, I feel it, I see it. Love that. Um, someday we will have one. I can feel my bones. This is the one. Someday that will be done. I can feel my bones. This is the one. So what is the one? Got a bad situation. I can feel it building up inside. Got a certain reputation outside, outside. I've got another... All right, so, like, you know, he, someone who gets into trouble... Um, and then it says, you know, someday thy kingdom come, you know, elsewhere in the lyrics. So I think this one is maybe about, like, someone, like, trying to turn their their life around, but they're not really able to do what they're struggling. And this is the one could be the one thing that finally turns their life around or the one thing that finally causes their life to end. So it can be finding that job and correcting one's path on life or, you know, taking that final hit of the needle and dying. And it can be, you know, which one is it? This is the one is how I'm going to choose to interpret the lyrics. Um, and it rocks. Got a bad I got to say it. So I like I was listening to Supper's Ready um, yesterday, and I was enjoying it very much. But I'm enjoying this so much more than Supper's Ready. Like, as much as I like my, my prog and my, you know, JRPG soundtracks and my jazz and my orchestral stuff, like, you know, and my Taylor Swift, like, there's always going to be a special place in my heart for, for, for this. It's just like, it, it just rocks. It's really cool. I love how the guitars sound like thunderbolts, which really goes with the theme of the album, where it's like, you know, thunder and lightning. It's like, it really gives you the sense of, you know, electric energy on an album. You know, this is what, this is pre-Ride the Lightning, I believe. When was Ride the Lightning? Ride the Lightning, what year was that? 84. Thunder and Lightning, I think, was... I'm blanking out, but I think it was 82, Thin Lizzy, 
fake Thin Lizzy fan doesn't remember the year. Oh, 83. I was wrong. Fake Thin Lizzy fan. But still, before Metallica. So take that, nerds. I'm going to rewind it here, uh, but real quick, uh, I think that the solo was really good, but unfortunately it follows the solo on Thunder and Lightning, which is one of the best uh, guitar solos in rock history. And so, well, this is doing a good job of keeping that, like, 80s metal flair going through the album. Um, so it's, it's keeping the energy going, but it's unfortunately going to be compared to how awesome that previous solo was, where this is good, but... You know, it's a tough act to follow. And I think Phil's vocals are really, really excellent on this track. He's doing a bang-up job. Yeah, there we go, Phil. See, one of the things that's really great about this track and also just the entire Thunder and Lightning album is that, like, it definitely has elements of, like, you know, what was going on in the hair metal scene at the time um, and new wave of British heavy metal scene, obviously. But it also, like, Phil's more soulful approach to vocals and, like, that, you know, the weird, like, you know, Catholic psychology stuff that goes into a lot of his lyrics, like... It's blended really well into the music that makes it, like, very distinct from other bands at the time where, you know, like, a song like um, Cold Sweat, like, it's it's very much, you know, a Thin Lizzy song. And while other bands can do it, it still has, like, Phil's character and charisma throughout versus, like... A, a lot of, like, 80s hair band stuff is interchangeable between bands, but a lot of, like, the the lyrics and melodies and even the pulse and rhythm is something you could only really get from Thin Lizzy and their take on that style, which I think is very, very cool. So, yeah, I am viewing this very favorably today, but now comes the very difficult part as to where this ends up ranking. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I'm going to put it below someday she is going to hit back I could easily uh, bump this up a few spots pretty easily um, looking at the list but I don't think I would necessarily put it lower I'm pretty high on it right now but I'm trying to sort of like temper my like 
opinion on it because like I really enjoy listening to 19. I think 19 is a stronger song. I think Soldier of Fortune is stronger. Um, Emerald I think is stronger and I like it more. Same with uh, Angel of Death. Um, and I think King's Call might be a it's, it's probably a better song but I think I just enjoy the musical style of this one a little bit more so it's where I rank it for now. Um, tough placement. It's It's very good. I very much enjoyed it. Um, you know, there's going to be the Thunder and Lightning haters in the comments who are just like, ah, oh, Phil's songwriting wasn't as good. It, like, You know what? Like, sorry you don't like to rock like the rest of us, but yeah, this just, it rocks. It's awesome. Um, yep. It's awesome. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, interested in the debate that's going to happen this week. And make sure you uh, have hit the bell icon so you don't miss a post because the audience vote should be out pretty soon, if not already in like a couple hours so make sure you participate in the audience vote to see what we're doing next week all right that's the video bye everyone